So our first topic in this class is to answer why do I need a blog for my website? And everyone always asks this, especially with a new client that my company wants to take on, because they might say, well, I'm a restaurant. I'm just trying to, to sell food, uh, our dishes and such. Why, why would I need a blog? Well, let me show you an example of one of my company's clients that is one of our full featured clients that has basically all of the things that I talk about in these classes. It's got a website, e-commerce, social media blog, etc. So this client here, if you go to your web browser, you can also check it. Uh, the website is Aquí S Texcoco. It's a Mexican food restaurant. A Q U I E S T E X C O C O dot com. Aquí S Texcoco. They are a restaurant that started in Tijuana in 1990. They came to the U.S. in 2008 or 9, I think, and then uh, eventually expanded a year ago to Los Angeles. So Tijuana, San Diego, Los Angeles, and the owner is, uh, is setting his, his sights on expanding now to Las Vegas, he claims, by next year. So this, is, this restaurant is doing well, and my company works with them and basically does everything web-related. Uh, so they're a Mexican food restaurant, but they don't have the, the usual California burritos and nachos and things like that. This is traditional Mexican lamb barbecue. So barbacoa de borrego, Mexican lamb barbecue. And so you may never have heard of that. You, maybe you think it's just carne asada and that sort of thing. But the purpose of this site has, has a couple purposes. There's an order online button at the top right, so you'll be able to order any of the dishes. They don't deliver yet, but if you order, then it'll be available for pickup at the restaurant. It does get crowded, so you can book a table. Those are the two big goals of this website. Order online and book a table. And so we want traffic to the website. We want people to search on Google, on Yahoo, on Bing, whatever, on a search engine. We want people to search Mexican food and find this restaurant. Because then what they can do here is order online, book a table, or maybe visit the restaurant, or call, or follow us on Twitter, or whatever. We want traffic. That's that whole art and science and magic of SEO, search engine optimization. Just because you've got a website about Mexican food doesn't mean people will find it. SEO. One of the aspects of SEO is that the search engines really want you to have uh, timely, relevant content. Let me make a note here. I'm going to provide you with notes and other items, so I'm going to start making some notes here. Some aspects of SEO. The search engines want you to have timely, relevant, and authoritative, authoritative, authoritative content. Timely content, relevant content, authoritative content. And I'll go into detail about those, but in the SEO class we go even further. In short, what this means is if you've got a website and your competitor also built a website at about the same time, um, you have to work to appear ahead of them on the search engines. Well, if you continue to update your site more often than your competitor, that's a good thing. If they haven't updated it in a month, in six months, in a year, but you've been updating it on a timely manner, and I'll explain what timely would mean, you have a little bit of a head start on your competitor. So Timely is simply updating your site on a regular basis. People then always ask, what's a regular basis? It's really going to depend on your website, its content, its purpose, and so forth. But uh, one sort of metric or goal to go for, if, if that has not been on your radar at all, is to update it at least once per month, at least. Some of the websites that have the most traffic out there are updated every day, every few hours. They obviously have a 
team of writers and content producers to update it that often. But at the very least, if you're not updating it at least once a month, you might be losing out on traffic. That then gets us to relevant. Well, am I going to change the graphic on my home page and add a new slideshow item here every month? No, that's not relevant enough. What has to what ties into relevancy is the actual content of the site, not that you're adding a new product or that you're adding a new picture of a of your employee. Basically, relevance is going to relate to the blog. The blog is a part of your website where you're going to create content, you're going to write stories, you're going to write blog posts. I'll show you examples in a moment. But that's what's going to be relevant. You're going to be updating a blog on a regular basis, once a month, for example, to start off with. A blog which is about your business and tangential material. This client here is a Mexican food restaurant. The, the ultimate goal is to sell tacos, right? Sell food. Part of that is to get traffic through social, uh, through, through the search engines. And so with this blog, we are writing content um, to make the search engines aware of the existence of this blog to get us traffic. If the search engines don't know that your site exists, then users won't know it exists because nowadays very, very few of us go to the yellow pages, even though they give us one every year and we put it in the recycle bin right away, very few of us use the yellow pages. M many more of us are, are simply going to our web browser and typing Mexican food restaurant or more directly Mexican food near me or authentic Mexican food or affordable Mexican food in Chula Vista. People are searching online. And if, as more and more of us have smartphones, um, more and more of us have smartphones, we have this built, this little computer right in our pocket and we are able to search more easily. And if you've got a modern phone, you're able to ask it, right? You've got Siri on the iPhone, you've got Google Now on your Android, you've got Cortana on a Windows phone, you ask it, what's a good Mexican food nearby? And it'll search the web, give you results that are relevant. You become relevant by having a website, by having it updated on a regular basis. The best way to update on a regular basis is a blog. We'll get into the details, of course, about writing in a relevant way. And authoritative is about writing the content, writing content that matters. that makes you an expert in your field. So timely, relevant, authoritative. It's all about content. And we will discuss these in more detail, of course, but these are pretty nebulous concepts at this moment. Let me show you how they apply to this client. This website has been around since uh, 2010, I believe. The owner had hired a different company before us, and they built him a website, and it was okay, but it needed to be uh, more powerful, uh, eye-catching and such. So eventually, the owner hired my company, and we built him a WordPress site. This is a WordPress website. There's many kinds of software to create a website. WordPress is the largest platform at the moment. I believe it has like 20% market share globally, which means hundreds of millions of sites globally. Only 20%? Yes, only hundreds of millions of sites. So this is a WordPress site. WordPress is great because it's full featured. It lets you create a variety of types of sites, e-commerce sites, blog sites, static sites, etc. It lets you blog very easily. So we created this site we shot all of these photos, made the graphics and the logo and everything. And so we've been updating it on a regular basis. If we go look at the blog, at the top you can click on blog, top menu. The point of 
this blog is a, a few reasons. One is to create uh, a presence online. So right here, one of the a few of the reasons why should we blog? Reasons to blog. To create a presence online. In the old days, the question was, do you have a website? Now that's assumed. If you didn't, if you never realized that, I'm telling you, it's assumed you have a website now. If you don't have a website yet, one of your first goals is to create a website. Um, so you want to create a presence online on your website, but a presence online doesn't only mean your website. It also means, for example, social media and blogs. So if only the website defined your business, you don't have, people are not going to get a full picture of your business. And the search engines are not going to promote you as much if you've only got a website. You want to be also on social media, and you also want to have a blog. So that's one of the reasons to blog, to create a presence online. Another reason is to create authoritative content. Authoritative content. You want to become an authority in what you're about. You want your name to pop up when someone's searching realtors in Bonita, when someone is searching uh, daycare centers in, uh, in Eastlake, when they're searching Mexican food in San Diego. You want to be that authority. You want to be on the first page of results. You become that authority on the first page of results again through the content, the presence that you're creating, the blog that you're writing, the social media that you're doing because you're showing on a regular basis, timely. You're showing often. We're writing about this, we're about this, we sell this, we are authoritative. This is our niche, our field. And other reasons to blog, to get traffic. Let's say you write an amazing blog post and it exists on your website, but you're gonna share it on Twitter and Facebook, Pinterest, etc. And then maybe you have followers on Twitter. Maybe you have 20 followers on Twitter. That's potentially 20 cheerleaders for you, 20 marketers for you, 20 people that, ha that viewed your blog post and shared it to their followers. Maybe you have 20 followers, but one of those followers has 200 followers. And so that one follower shared your blog to their 200 followers. So now you've reached 220 people, potentially. And that could get you more traffic. And then that is to, the another part of the reason also to blog is to improve your SEO. Because a static website that has not been updated in a while it might be the most beautiful looking website. It might have maybe one blog post that was amazing, but what else do you have? The search engine that search engines ask all the time. What else do you have? And if you can't provide that what else, social media, blogs, etc., then you're not going to be as relevant or authoritative to the search engines, and then you won't appear on the top results. So on this client's website, we've got a blog post, the latest one, about being rated at Zagat. Does anyone know the website or the publication Zagat? Zagat is one of the biggest names, if not the biggest name, in restaurant reviews. So this client of ours got rated on Zagat. That's further creating that authority, letting Google and Bing and Yahoo and visitors know that this is a Zagat-rated business. These other these recent posts have a, have been a little bit about tooting our own horn, but we'll see the different kinds of blog posts. These are the celebrities that have visited the restaurant in San Diego or Los Angeles. Uh, so there's a couple of those. Uh, they opened in commerce, so that's advertising right there, marketing. That's 
that's a blog post that was targeted to the Los Angeles market via social media to let them know that we are open now in your neck of the woods because people would be coming to San Diego and they would be saying are you gonna open in here are you going to put a new restaurant there and the restaurant is expanding and then the next leg after San Diego was Los Angeles technically commerce uh, so there's that blog post to get you can sort of think about it like a press release to get um, to get traffic and and to be known to get some fame what's the purpose of a press press release to let people know something so there's that blog post of a press release nature on the site as I said previously the the restaurant is Mexican food but maybe you've never had some of these dishes so another aspect of what this blog is about is to educate people on the food so this plant right here which looks like an agave plant it's relative, it's relative actually does anyone know what does an what does an agave plant graduate to? Tequila. Tequila. Yes. So the the related maguey plant also graduates to an alcoholic beverage, which is pulque. This restaurant serves pulque, which is one of the few restaurants in San Diego County uh, that serves pulque. So you're going to get educated by reading this blog. What is pulque? Uh, its history and such, and that we serve it at the restaurant, and that there's different flavors and such. It's a very interesting beverage because you can have it straight, which has a very sort of earthy flavor, uh, and then you can also have it mixed with a variety of fruits and such. Uh, so, yes? Is there any reason related to SEO why the blog posts are not dated, or is that just more of... That is more aesthetic. Um, the question comes up about should we put dates on our blog posts? There doesn't seem to be a consensus, yes or no. So we've just chosen here for aesthetic reasons not to put a date, but it should not help or hurt you if you do have a date. It may change. The search engines move their goalposts all the time. They may at one point decide, make sure you've got a date on your blog post. Then we'll have to go back in and edit it so that it shows it. So at the moment, it's kind of either or. Perhaps lean toward, yes, put a date at a future point, and by default, WordPress will put a date on your blog, so it'll do it for you. But just for um, presentation, it doesn't have a date. <clears throat> we have one page full of posts, and then we can go to page two. Yes? Yes, actually. Uh, the WordPress technology automatically creates dates and such, and it is in the code. There's always a last modified date built into your pages and posts, so the search engines will see that, even if the user doesn't see it. So if you just went in and modified, say, five year blogs, I mean, then you can set the date manually. If you just modify them, does that look like activity for Google? So if you did, you don't see a whole new paragraph on five of them, but if you just do a new sentence, I wouldn't modify the dates, but I would modify the posts, and in the post mark that there's been an update. That I think is better practices than modifying the date. Because if you modify the date, actually what often happens is you lose the, uh, the social shares. If you notice here on this particular blog post, and I'll go into detail, this has been shared on Facebook 38 times, on Twitter 4 times, and that's tied to the, the original date of the post. So if you change the original date, suddenly all those become zero because it's a new post. So I would not go back to change my original dates. I would simply add new content, mark that it's been updated, and that'll work out better. So I'll bring that up again. It's a little technical, but um, there's a lot to talk about. That's why it's a four-week class. Um, so here's another one. This was the, ver the first big celebrity that came to the restaurant. Andrew Zimmern, uh, and he he did an episode of his Bizarre Foods, and uh, he he featured the restaurant because one of the Bizarre Foods that they serve at this restaurant is lamb brain tacos. So if you're a little adventurous, you can get some lamb brain tacos or chapulines, which are crickets. You can get a cricket taco, and also the the normal stuff like tortilla soup and and plain tacos and such. But um, that's what got them their first bit of fame. This is a blog post about the craft beers. This is an example of a post that was uh, about a year old, 
And then we, the restaurant has added new beers, so we updated a new picture, we added new text, and then uh, reshared it on social media. Didn't edit the original, uh, the original dates, but reshared it on social media. Added a new video, and that's gotten 119 shares on uh, on Facebook, and 12 on Twitter, and 11 on Google Plus, and more. So then here it explains some history of lamb, barbacoa style, barbecue style, the drinks. So the purpose of this blog is multifaceted, and we'll talk about different kinds of blog posts um, when we get to that. But um, those are the reasons. Let's create a presence, authority to get traffic to improve SEO. That's the why of it. We'll talk, of course, about the how of it soon. Question? So with every blog post, we have a, uh, some kind of visual, a picture, or a graphic. Or, is that important? Is that part of it, or is it just maybe the, the word that's important? I'll have actually a checklist about the best things to do on your blog post. And one of those things <coughs> is uh, to at least have one graphic. Because just a big wall of text is not so good. The search engines really nowadays they tell us optimize your site for people, not for the search engines. Because the search engines are going to give you a bunch of bullet points. And if you follow them rigidly and mechanically, you technically have a good blog post. But the catch is then the search engines will say you're only optimizing for the search engine, not for people. And for people, well, we like to see a little picture and other techniques. So, yes, you, st you do want to include at least one picture. And I'll have that on my checklist when we get to actually writing. Question? Yes. I was wondering about um, when you're writing the content, um, what kind of keywords, how do we know what keywords to put in there? Well, when we get to the actual writing part, we'll, we'll get to that in detail because that's, that's a big answer to a small question. So, here then is an example of a client uh, that you might not think that they would have a blog. You would think, well, the purpose of their site is to, is to sell tacos and such. Well, here it educates you on the food. For example, they sell quesadillas uh, and also using traditional ingredients such as uh, flor de calabaza and other traditional foods, enchiladas and such. Um, so that's the purpose of this blog, to create a presence because then we, we write a blog post and we also share it. We publicize it on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, whatever, other social networks, so that it just doesn't exist on this site, that it also exists on other social networks. And we'll get to that too, sharing your content on social media. And because of this, there is the there are the results of searching on the search engines and the restaurant shows up but then also great you've got a like and okay you've got followers on Twitter great and you've got a blog great so what well so what ultimately is that more tacos are sold more reservations are made expanding to Las Vegas so all of that is in service of what is the ultimate goal of your business the ultimate goal of this business is to sell food to make money so you have to decide what the ultimate goal of your business or online presence is. To get a job as a blogger, to get a job as a social media marketer, to get readers to your poetry, to get a new gig for your band, to get an, a showing of your art, of your watercolor paintings, whatever your goal is to get online, that's the purpose of getting good SEO and traffic and follows on social media and all of that. Let me show you an example of another um, of another client that has a blog. And this is probably gonna happen a bunch to everyone. If you're having trouble with your keyboard, the way to lower it is basically put some pressure on the center post and then press down a little bit and it should go down. So don't try to move it to the edges, put it in the center push on the center and that should be able to move your keyboard. Okay, so this other client, Elsa 
Valencia.com. She's an up-and-coming uh, jewelry designer. Very nice jewelry. She's actually very recently been contacted by Vogue magazine in Mexico to start featuring her, her jewelry. And so uh, she has this online presence. So she's got her website. It shows off her jewelry. Um, she's on Twitter. She's on Instagram. She's got very good traffic on Instagram, actually. Instagram is great for visual content, so showing off those rings and pendants and so forth on Instagram. That's her, that's her website and her brand and everything. This is another website uh, built in WordPress. Different kind of style than the, the other one. Much more clean and, and, and modern and, and stark and so forth. Uh, big, bold graphics. It's also uh, mobile friendly in that if someone visits her site on a mobile device, so if I shrink my web browser kind of like a, a cell phone, you know, a cell phone is tall and thin, it's mobile friendly. It grows and shrinks to the size of the monitor. That is an aspect of, of SEO. It doesn't exactly relate to blogging, but I'm going to give you a, a freebie here. Uh, if your site is mobile friendly, that really helps your SEO. If it looks good on a mobile device, and on a tablet, and on a laptop, and on a desktop, it's mobile friendly, that helps your SEO. The, the search engines recently said this is going to be more and more important. A few years ago it was not so important, now it is. So if you visit your website on a mobile device, and all the text is tiny, and you have to pinch to zoom in, it's not mobile friendly. If the website content automatically loads up nice and big and readable on a mobile device, it's probably mobile friendly. One way to test it also is notice what I did in the web browser. I just changed the size of my web browser. Big, looks good. Medium, notice it shrunk a little bit, rearranged, looks good. Small, for a mobile device, it's mobile friendly. See, mobile version enabled. And that's something that WordPress will let us do pretty easily, really, with the click of a button. And so you can go to the shop and see the, see the jewelry, um, easily order, and all of that. But there's also a blog. And in this case, the blog is used to really tell the story behind the pieces. The pieces are pricey, but hopefully you read the blog, you see the pictures, and they resonate with you. That's why this design looks like this. That's the meaning behind this. I believe in this. That's part of my core value. Okay, I will take out my credit card and buy it. So that's what the purpose of the blog is, to, to give the story behind the process of creating the jewelry or the story behind the meaning of the jewelry. Question. So you're writing a blog for all these different... How, um, how do you get to know the company so well? How do you know what to write so well? That really is the process of getting to know the company. Uh, in my SEO class, I give out an activity where it's basically uh, a, a couple of, uh, of documents to, to, uh, to have filled out with the client talk to them, ask them these questions, fill this all in, because yes, obviously the owner of the business is going to be the best person to talk about their products. And us as a third party, we usually start off with very little knowledge of their product. So through this discovery phase or exploration phase, we ask them questions, we get answers, we ask more questions further, we look at their products, we learn as much as we can, and then we start to get more educated about their product and yeah, maybe the first one or two or three blogs aren't as in the voice of the company, but hopefully if you do have a relationship for some amount of time, you are going to get much better at the voice uh, of their company and understanding their product to write effectively about it. What do you think about allowing other people to um, post blogs on your website? That is one of the things we'll talk about which is relevant. Other people, ghost writing, guest writing, etc., it is relevant, but there could be that downside of it that if we hire just anyone that will do a blog for $25 or, you know, $1 a word or whatever, there is that danger that they don't know very much about your product and you're going to get a mediocre blog post you paid too much for. So it, it could work out, but you do want to vet 
you do want to um, approve of the potential writers for you, get samples and such to see the quality of their writing, and then maybe do a test post or two and then decide to take them on to write for you. So this one's got dates. Um, July 10th, uh, May 20th, older posts, February 3rd, etc. So you, you, you can click, notice there's a snippet, there's a little bit of text, perhaps a picture, but then you can read more. And we'll talk about some of these details. Um, but you click read more, and then the fuller blog appears with much more content. More pictures, more text, links, and so forth. And again, we'll talk about ideas of what to blog, the content to, to write, things to avoid, and so forth. So those are a couple of examples there. Let's look at one more. Uh, if we go to my company's website, uh, pmdinteractive.com, we've got a blog there too. So the purpose of our website online, request a quote, request a free quote. Ultimately, right, to get jobs as web designers, marketers, human resource people, whatever, we provide a bunch of services. So the purpose of the, of the site, what do we do? It's got those purposes, basically to get us more jobs. Uh, in order to get us to that point, well, you can go check out the portfolio of clients, which needs to be updated uh, about us. And then maybe you go over to the blog, and you see a bunch of blog posts about relevant web design and web marketing things, and hopefully that gets you thinking, they know what they're doing. Let me hire them. If not, the worst case is you read the blog post and maybe you learned something and you apply it yourself. Great, we're happy to do that. Notice we've got something here, and this actually ties in with our class. There is the, uh, the blog checklist part one, part two, and part three is coming soon. Um, um, more relevant information about what you should do with regards to blogging. Before that, there is our top WordPress plugins part one. We'll have a part two eventually. A guide to choosing a good password, tips on Google+. Plus and so forth. There's a little bug. There should be a read more page two and such. i got to check what's going on there. But here's a few blog posts to look at. And um, again, we, or I practice what I preach. My company uh, does that. So this particular blog post, our top WordPress plugins, is going to adhere to the different things we're going to talk about in this class on how to write a good blog post. And I'll have a checklist. You can get a preview of it in those two other blog posts. Part 3 is not there yet, but I'll, I'll give you a handout that has that condensed. And so this is another example. The, the point of our site here is for you to hire us, basically. And so we are showing relevant, timely, authoritative content. It's relevant because you need to hire someone to make a website for you. This company can do that. It's authoritative because we're writing on these topics of web design, web development, marketing. It's, it's authoritative. It's important, real stuff. It's timely. It should be updated about once a month or so. Sometimes we miss a day, but you know what they say about the, the cobbler's uh, children have no shoes. Uh, and so um, it's following these tenets that I talk about in, in this class and all the classes. So usually on this first day we spend more time talking in, in uh, theoretical terms and such. We, do, we don't start writing blogs yet, that'll be next time, because one of the activities we'll have later today is blog idea brainstorming. Because maybe, hopefully I'm selling you on the idea that, yeah, you need a blog. But then you get to the wall, well what do I write about? What could I possibly write about in my dog walking business? Well, we're going to have a time when we brainstorm these ideas and such. So 
we're going to get to that. But we're talking in theory now. We're, we're trying to answer the question: Why does why does your business have a blog, or why does your bu business need a blog? Victor, yes. Does WordPress know on what site is accessing the site? Is it the is it the phone, or is it the computer, or is it the tablet? The WordPress software itself can tell you some statistics of who's accessing your site at the moment. I don't believe it tells you if it's on a phone and tablet and such, but it will tell you what countries it's coming from, your popular pages, cities and such. But better, a better way to get more statistics about the traffic coming to your site is Google Analytics and Bing Analytics, uh, which we'll touch on. But we'll also look at the built-in statistics tracker in WordPress, and it can tell you some of this info. But the better tool is Google Analytics, Bing Analytics, and I talk about that in the SEO class in more detail. So mostly I've shown examples of websites that are created in WordPress, and I can show others, but you get the idea. The other kind of blog that we'll talk about is Tumblr, but we'll talk about that after our break. So we've seen, uh, we've talked about some theory, shown you some examples will continue but usually every hour or so we take a break it's just about that time so we're gonna it's 1040 we're gonna take a break 10 minutes we'll be back at 1050 when we go on we'll continue to learn these concepts and apply them